everyone, and welcome to 1923 Main Street. Home of the Daddy Daughter Disney Travel Podcast. We are your hosts. I am Mike Bellobranic. And I'm Amelia Bellobranic. And today we're going to be talking all about the Disney Springs Resort area. The Disney Springs Resort area, one of four, what I call it, the Disney World neighborhoods. I like to talk about them that way. There's the Magic Kingdom neighborhood. The best one. And if you are a longtime listener, you may remember back in episode 11, quite a while ago, We talked about the Magic Kingdom Resort area, so if you want to listen to that and you haven't heard it, head on back to episode 11. And then, of course, there's the Epcot Resort area and the Animal Kingdom Resort area. But today, we are focusing on the Disney Springs Resort area. Which is pretty underrated. I think it's the most... In terms of hotels. I think it's the most underrated resort area of all because... It does not have theme parks associated with it, so people just overlook it. Well, what if you don't like the theme parks? Or what if you don't know what's actually around there? So that's what we're going to talk about today. It's sort of exploring the Disney Springs Resort area. One of our favorite neighborhoods. I think it's grown on us over time, wouldn't you say that? Oh yeah, definitely, because you start discovering more and more things you can do that are not necessarily park related, which I mean, now with the parks being super weird, that might be a good thing for you to go and try. And first, let's talk about accommodations to start with, because there are two deluxe Disney Resort Villas properties right at Disney Springs. One of them is Disney Saratoga Springs Resort and Spa, which is quite a nice spa. And the other is Disney's Old Key West Resort. Both of these are... They're kind of similar in a sense. They're similar in a sense. We prefer Saratoga Springs, personally, because... Yeah, why? I forget why. I just know I do. Because it's walkable. If you stay in College Park, it's walkable to Disney Springs. So both of these resorts... See, that's not a plus for me. ...are located on or around Lake Buena Vista, which is the body of water at Disney Springs, in case you did not know that. It's also the main street name for... Most of the streets, so it's yeah. very popular. It's a very popular name, Buena Vista, and that is Lake Buena Vista. And in this area, you can choose to stay. If you want to stay in a Disney Deluxe Resort or a Disney Resort, you have two Deluxe Villas choices. And villas are great because if you haven't stayed in one, we've talked about those a lot. You get kitchens, basically, and laundry and kitchenettes, depending on the size. Both of these resorts are sort of set up like little communities, like little subdivisions almost. They're not really hotel-like in the way that you'd think of other hotels. That's an interesting way to describe them because they are still hotels. They're just more of a little village, almost. Well, I think Disney of them as village. Yeah, like I think of them really as neighborhoods when I talk about the Disney neighborhoods and Old Key West. They're just a like... fun fact, if you didn't know, was the original Disney Vacation Club, and when it was first opened, it was called Disney Vacation Club. <laughs> How old is that hotel? Yeah, it's uh. I forget when it first opened, but it's pretty old nowadays. But you have to take a nice little boat trip, which is a nice little ride on the Sasagula boats from Old Key West to Disney Springs. But I prefer Saratoga Springs because you can you have the option to walk to Disney Springs. See, I actually disagree with that because I personally don't like to walk. I like to minimize the walking as much as possible. But I just prefer Saratoga because... In my opinion, it's prettier, and there's just more to do. Yeah, it's much bigger at 65 acres. There's a lot more wide open space. There are five pools there. Of course, we do the Great Saratoga Springs Pool Hop Challenge when we stay there, and we have an episode on that, or definitely on the blog, so check that out. But why else might you stay here? So one main reason is if you like to golf, either one of these resorts are really good because the Lake Buena Vista Golf Course is sort of between them. So while we like to stay in College Park, part of Saratoga Springs, you may want to stay in the other end of the park, which is actually closer to the Gulf. And And you know, it's just a short 65-acre walk. Yeah, it's good. But there are uh, inter-resort buses. That is true. I I think this is one of the only resorts. There's only a few of them that have this special privilege. Yeah, we have the really big ones. Like in Fort Wilderness would be another one that's like that. But there are not only... Disney Resort Hotels in the Disney Springs Resort area. So if you want to stay off-site in a non-Disney hotel, Disney adapted recently the way they uh, did it in California where there are only three Disney hotels. So they 
they made a lot of unofficial hotel, Disney hotels from the independent hotels located around yes. Disneyland. And they did the same thing recently at Disney World. I think they call them good neighbor hotels. So there are a lot of independent hotels located right around Disney Springs, right across the street. And if you want to stay off site, there's some really good options there. There's some quite high end hotels around there as well. They're not all, you know, holiday inns. No, they're not. In fact, some of them are arguably true luxury, uh, even nicer than the Grand Floridian or on par with that. Well, let's not get hasty. Yeah. Here. So, so Disney Springs Resort Area is awesome because it does give you the option of both off site, you know, hotels like Hyatt Regency or Wyndham, those types of hotels. There's even a Waldorf. A Waldorf Astoria, yes. So you have a great choice of non-Disney hotels, and you do get some Disney perks as the Good Neighbor Hotels, or, as we still prefer, stay on site at the Disney Deluxe Villas in that area, which are right across the water. They're surprisingly nice for being what you consider, or well, for having what you consider a trait of the value hotels, having open on to just open air, you'd think that they're not as nice as the rooms on the interior actually are. I completely lost what you're saying. (laughs) Basically, the rooms, the inside of the rooms are much nicer than what you'd expect looking at the exterior. Are you talking about value resorts? No. I'm talking about Saratoga because they have... Oh, you said the value hotels. Like when they open onto... Because the doors aren't part of a hallway. They're just right. the they're outside. more motel style. Yeah, which you said that the value resorts have. Oh, I have. see. Yes, they so are similar. To, don't the confuse them because the interior definitely makes up for that. Yeah. And in <laughs> fact, if you're going... Well, here's a good thing. Saratoga just went through a major yes, refurbishment. Yes, and they look so nice. The rooms are amazing. If you care about square footage, more important, then you may want to veer towards Disney's old Key West resorts because they are some of the largest rooms on yeah, property. I mean, we're also a family of three, so we're not yeah, too concerned about that. But just in terms of space. Yeah, if you do have a bigger family, that's good. It's also, I think it's one of the lesser expensive, on the least expensive side. Yes, of, it is. It is, yeah. I believe, slightly less than Saratoga Springs. And just in general, the other, the Grand, the Poly, and the Contempt. But it's a really unknown area. I love, I mean, people know Disney Springs, but they don't really think about the resort area that surrounds it. People will take bus rides there. And let me tell you, from anywhere else, getting to Disney Springs for us is the it's worst. Kind of a pain. Yeah, it's a pain. It just seems to be the worst place to travel to. We're not a big Disney bus fan, except for the time we got one literally all to ourselves. Yeah, that was last month. A, no, pan- a pandemic bus to ourselves. So yeah. we were happy about that. But usually the buses are not. The best mode of transport, I'd honestly recommend taking an Uber or Lyft or rideshare or other things in that category. And of course, the anchor to the Disney Springs Resort area is what? Disney Springs. Disney Springs. Which, I mean, especially if you don't want to go into the parks, it's really good to be at walking distance or boating distance, too, because if you are going to spend a lot of time there, which we do tend to even on park trips, it's good to have an easy access to get there. And you have your own like special entrance that isn't too crowded usually. Yeah, there are, there, you can actually get into Disney Springs walking from both ends of Saratoga. So yeah, there is a good. walking over on the far end or the golf course end, but it's further from the part of Disney Springs that we like. But either way, you can get there quite easily. So why... Should or shouldn't you stay in the Disney Springs Resort area? I bet many of you have not considered staying there. Well, you have to sort out your priorities. What are you trying to do mainly on the trip? If your goal is to hit all of the parks all day long, maybe you don't want to stay away from all of the parks. But if you want to get shopping and get Disney merch and eat at fancy dining and still go to the parks a bit then this might be nice for you to have easy access to Disney Springs. I know a lot of our family loves the shopping village that is now Disney Springs, and they spend a lot of time there, so they like to stay at Saratoga for easy access. Yeah, there's there's no question. If you love shopping, you should really consider the Disney Springs Resort area because, as you know, in pretty much every hotel and Disney park, There's a lot of different shops, but for the most part, with the exception of the Grand Floridian, which has a couple of unique shops, they're all sort of all the same. Yeah. Whereas Disney Springs, especially over the recent years since they renamed it and and grew it as (laughs) Disney Springs, really has a ton of variety. And they're not just all 
they're not just all Disney stores by a long shot. There's a lot of unique shops of all shapes and sizes, branded and unbranded. Yeah, even if they do have Disney stuff, you might not be able to pay for it with your Disney gift card, as some people might find out the hard way. Even cool stores, yeah, like Uniqlo. They sell lots of Disney stuff, but it's not necessarily a Disney store. Well, That's right. Oh, I see what you're saying. You can't use your Disney gift card yeah. because they're not Disney stores, which I know, is sort of I know, but they neat. sell Disney stuff. It's very confusing to... Yeah. Well, they'll tell you, trust me. <laughs> yeah, and you won't get your discounts if you're a pass holder <laughs> yeah. or a DVC member in the non-Disney shops, but you will at all the other ones. And there are cool ones like Trendy and the dress shop at Cherry Lane and, yeah. you know, that whole area in there. So a ton of shopping and Disney Springs is easily a two-day trek on its own if you want to really start looking around yeah and also this is just a current fact some stores that are not disney owned do have different covid protocols in place than disney owned stores yeah they are different there they run by their own sort of corporate covid protocols yeah so that's just another thing to remember and if you love eating or oh, dining. Yeah. It's another great reason to consider staying in this area. If you're going on an Instagram vacation, I also recommend this because the Springs has great photo spots. Oh man, you're not kidding. Tons and tons of them. You know, uh, we're guilty of this too. We too often don't spend enough time just really looking around and enjoying it. We did a little bit more on our last COVID trip. There's because, so much to do. Yeah, we didn't do parks. As much. As much. So there is so much to do and see and really look around. And, you know, you can you can love the food and wine at Epcot, which we do. But it's sort of like an all-year-round food festival at Disney Springs. So there is literally something for everyone. And it's not all table service. There's really good quick-service dining at Disney Springs as well. So you don't always have to have a reservation. So those are a couple of reasons. If you love shopping and you love dining and you still go to parks and things, Disney Springs is a yes. great thing to consider. Because it's not actually that difficult to get to parks from the Disney Springs Resort area. There are a lot of different ways to get to the parks. There's a bunch of different transportation. It's almost harder to get to Disney Springs from a different hotel than to get to a park yeah. from Disney Springs Hotel. I would agree with that. Because Disney Springs traffic is so bad, especially on the weekends. Yeah, it's crazy because a lot of locals do go there. Because you don't have to pay to get in. Yeah, and it's a cool sort of, you get the Disney vibe, which is another thing. It's a very different vibe than all the other hotels. First of all, let's break this down. So you were just talking about transportation. If you're staying at Old Key West or Saratoga Springs, you will have free transportation from Disney to all the parks. However, if you're staying at a good neighbor hotel, depending on which one it is, A lot of them have transportation. Some are paid, though. So you're going to want to check as you're booking those hotels about their transportation options to the Disney parks. Yeah. Now, I can't remember. Do the Disney buses have transportation from the Springs to other parks? We don't really do that a lot, so I can't. No, they tend to go to hotels as far as I can. I'm just thinking of the bus signs there. Because when we went from a park to Springs, we Ubered. Yeah. Or vice versa. And so, first of all, the bus area is sort of in the middle of Disney Springs now. And at the far yes. end at the marketplace near where the buses used to go many years ago and where the bridge is from College Park in Saratoga Springs, that is the where the ride share will drop you off, which yes. is a really good spot for drop off. We like it. It's at the marketplace end and you sort of... Yeah. Closer to World of Disney side of Disney Springs, yeah, I would say. It's a long walk if you have to run in the rain to the boathouse. Yeah, <laughs> don't go in the <laughs> afternoon in the summer. So that is another tip. If you're just visiting the Disney Springs Resort area, go in the morning yeah. when it opens. But also another thing with the buses is they are a lot farther for the value resort. And then the closer bus areas are for the luxury resorts at the Disney. I'm not sure if that's a thing they do at all the parks, but at least in Disney Springs, it's a very long hike. Yeah, it's pretty much the the way it is everywhere. Here's another thing I would suggest. I used to say, if it's your first time, don't stay at Disney Springs because you want to be closer to the parks. See, that's misleading. However, I'm going to change that now because I I was just talking to a family we know and it dawned on me that if you're one of those families that is sort of a split family and you have a bunch of people who, well, first of all, if you're going to Walt Disney World, somebody's presumably wants to go and likes it. But you might have family members who aren't that into Disney and they're just sort of going along because they're, you know, they're going on the vacation. 
You should kind of force them to do stuff that you want to do, but you know, if they have free will or whatever. But Disney, the Disney Springs Resort area is a good option to stay in if you're one of those sort of split families, I would say. And yeah. especially if one of them's a true. golfer, they'll love it even more. Oh, but that is also true. But it's because it's away from the sort of more frantic feel you get when you're seeing monorails and boats and ferries, for example, in the Magic Kingdom area or, you know, the Skyliner and all that stuff in the Epcot area. You don't get that in the Disney Springs area. It's a little bit more laid back. It is, yeah, that's true. And anyone can enjoy Disney Springs itself. And if you don't have a high, like an uptight planner person in your family, then you might enjoy this more. If you have one of those people, they might want all of that noise and they might want it somewhere else. But I still think it's a good option, even though I am an uptight planner person. <laughs> Yeah, we quite like it. It's a different kind of Disney vacation for sure. So why would you say, or can you think of any reason why someone should not stay in the Disney Springs Resort area? If you are going to pound the parks all day, every day, and don't have any plans to go to Disney Springs, yes, they're nice hotels, but they'll be more inconvenient for you and what you have planned. Even yeah, though- I think I would agree with that. If it Really, if if you are... I'm going to Disney World for Disney Parks, and everyone in my family loves Disney Parks. I don't think Disney Springs Resort Area is for you. It's a nice resort area. It's just not going to accommodate you in the way that you'd want it to, because there's a lot less transportation options, considering it is so far removed. Yeah, you will be reliant on Disney buses or private transport oh, if you're staying off-site. I being reliant off-site. on Disney buses. However, I will say, if I didn't say this already earlier... If you are planning to stay off-site at Walt Disney World, I would recommend the Disney Springs Resort area and nothing further because yeah. it's pretty much as close as you can get and the Four Seasons. But even that's a bit more isolated. The Four Seasons Resort Orlando is but on its own. if you're staying at the Four Seasons, I don't think you care that yeah, much. Yeah, I don't think you care. But if you're <laughs> staying off-site, I would look at those uh, good neighbor hotels uh, yeah, and or one point. of the nicer hotels, even if they aren't in that area, because you're you're pretty much as close to Disney property. That's the border of Walt Disney World in that area. So it's a good spot to stay in because you're pretty much going to get the Disney vibe in a non-Disney resort hotel. Yeah. And all those hotels have a try to sprinkle Disney magic as best they can. Also, I'm sure this would be very inconvenient, but if you are staying at one of those resorts, and I'm not sure if you can walk to Disney Springs. From some of them, yes, From you any can. of them, but yeah, yes, you if can. you can walk to Disney Springs, you could take a bus to Polly and then take a bus to a park if you really wanted free transportation. Yeah, you that's could, a that's a good point. You, you can that. walk to the bus terminal in Disney Springs. I mean, it's a that's, bit of a hike. So. That's why I was asking if they have direct to park transportation. Well, those hotels may, right? That's the thing. We yeah, we, uh, we don't know. Yeah, specifically. Full disclosure, I have not stayed in it. We only stay in Disney proper hotels. So I have not stayed in any of those hotels, although I've seen them all. They're, yeah. Not all, but I've seen a lot of them and they're quite nice. But they probably do have direct transportation to park. So, I mean... If we sometimes we lift or Uber to parks anyway, so maybe paying for that transportation is not bad. But yeah, yeah technically cool. you could go to Disney Springs. I guess if you were going there, sure you can yeah. hop on the free Disney transport there. It's not like they ask you for resort ID when yeah. you get on those buses. Or if you just want to ride a Disney bus, get a Disney bus card. Like ask, I'm not sure if they're still doing that in COVID, but just ride a Disney bus. You'll you love the Disney buses. It's a great oh, yeah. experience. Well, they were better. Uh, ironically, the Disney buses were better during yeah. our COVID trip. That's Maybe because there were slightly produced. less people last month. or yeah. yeah, in August when we were last there. Yes. So another thing about the Disney Springs Resort area, there is a park nearby, but it's not a theme park. It is a water park. It is a water park and it is Typhoon Lagoon. Which so again, if, you're going, if and when it opens. Yeah. And if you're going in Disney in the summer, I would also recommend staying here because being close to a water park is definitely a thing that you would like to have. Yeah. Typhoon Lagoon is, I would definitely lump it into the Disney Springs Resort area. Of course. It's, it's so close. Yeah. It's almost right across the street. And it also has, you know, lots of things for everyone in the family to do. So really, really close there. So the Disney Springs Resort area, I really think of it as an underrated neighborhood. It's definitely underrated because a lot of people don't know about it and they don't 
want to stay there as much because it is farther away from parks. But there are a lot of parks, especially if you have people in your family that are not just a one-track park brain, you know, because a lot of families do have split motives. And so I think that would be a good option. Or you compromise and stay there one time at the resort because you're not really compromising any of the luxury, even though it might look that way from the outside. And if you've never stayed in Disney Deluxe Villas, these are two good ones to stay in because you get a really good, they're, they're complete villa resorts. There's a lot of them are hotels and villas like Brand Floridian or Bay Lake and the Contemporary. Yeah. But this, these two, Old Key West and Saratoga are uh, straight up villas, everything yeah. on property. But even if you're not, um, even if you're not a DVC member, you can still stay here. Yeah. You can still pay cash for the rooms. Yeah. You don't have to be a Disney Vacation Club member to stay there. And there's lots to do because the properties are so big. I mean, yeah. we love renting bikes and riding around Saratoga Springs. And I know we didn't mention this because you're not pro- really going to be dining at the hotels that much, considering all of the dining options at the Springs. But they do have not bad dining at the hotels. Yeah, it's true. I mean, especially at Old Key West, Olivia's, which, you know what? Olivia's is okay for me. But I know a lot of people just love it. They they rave about the fried chicken. Yeah. I don't think it's the greatest personally but you know what i do love that old key west has a whole backstory based on old key west that's true as all the resorts do a lot of old sort of hidden backstories and they have a little free tour there that i would definitely recommend it's a lot of fun yeah a little pin and snacks at the end well after covid the snacks will return but yeah so there's a lot of things to do at the resorts themselves and they are quite large. And the five pools at Saratoga yeah. Springs, if the, you like pools. Yeah, I was just going to say the pool at Oakey West is really nice, but the five pools at Saratoga are a definite plus. I honestly, I like the treehouse pool the best. The little treehouse pool? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's the other thing. <laughs> yeah. I forgot about those. The treehouse villas. So even at Old Key West Resort, there's another level of accommodation, which are the treehouse villas. Old Key West Resort? Sorry, at Disney Saratoga Springs Resort at the far end. And there is a boat launch from the treehouse villas because it's too far to walk to Disney Springs from the treehouse villas. But you can take a boat from there. And you can walk. It's just a really long one. Yeah, it's too long. But the treehouse villas themselves are, ra- well, like they, they're made to be like treehouses. So they're raised they're off nice. the ground. They're sort of cool. They're, they're like the Saratoga version of the bungalows. Yeah, or maybe the cabins less, at Fort Wilderness. Yeah, that's the, a better comparison. Yeah, they're a bit more rustic because they're treehouse villas. <laughs> and they're, yeah, it's definitely worth riding around and looking at those things. And that's uh-huh. why when we do our pool hop challenge, which is all five Saratoga's pools as fast as you can spending one minute in the water in each one and I so we rent bikes to do it yeah unfortunately i don't think they have their own little water feature in the backyard of the trios villas but their community pool i actually find quite nice it is quiet it is one of the quieter pools so that's I don't know good. why i like it so much yeah. it's... it reminds me of a backyard pool i mean it's bigger than a backyard pool but it's just sort of a basic pool Whereas the High Rock Spring Pool at uh, Saratoga Springs is it's the one. It's great, yeah, but it's allowed. It's, it's quite... busy. That's the that's the one right by the carriage house, the main building. Old Key West does have a couple of pools, at least maybe three, but the main yeah. one, again by the main lobby building, is quite nice. It's got a pretty good slide out of that. It's made like a sandcastle, yeah. they, and, and they have tennis courts yeah, and... and giant chess pieces and cool bucket photo ops. Foosball and outdoor pool, like billiards and all that sort of fun stuff that a lot of the resorts have. But with the size of those resorts, they're great for kids to run around. Lots of space, lots of trails, lots of things to do. The themes of them are really great. I like horses, so I'm a big fan of the Saratoga theme. But the Old Key West, it has it has lots of theming to it in the lobby. Yeah, there's. it's really intricate. It's much more intricate than Saratoga Springs. That's true. Which I'll give, was, I'll give it Which that. was one of Walt Disney's loves of Saratoga, New York and horses. So that's how Saratoga Springs came about. Saratoga, New York's a thing. That's what it's based after. There's a big <laughs> horse race, yes. Right. Saratoga Obviously. Springs in New York State is what this resort is based on. Of course, I knew that. And Obviously. there was a fun fact. The potato chip as a snack was invented in Saratoga Springs, New York. 
Oh, I like the potato chips. Yeah, they should they should play that up more at Saratoga Springs Resort. Being you should the get chi- free potato chips. Yeah, be being the chip there. lovers that we are, they should give you a little bag of chips when you check yeah. in. Or just give me like a whole gallon. All right, of them. that's our tip for today, Disney Imagineers. If you're yes. listening, we suggest you tell the little backstory because that was in one of the Disney Files <laughs> quizzes recently, the Disney Vacation Club magazine. Oh yeah. Yeah, that was uh that was one of the questions. What was invented in Saratoga Springs? What snack? And it was potato chips. So That's cool. I remember that because I am a chip lover. I thought you were going to say because I got it right. And there's and no Amelia like got Disney chips, right? There's, they should do like fresh fried Disney chips like they, they do should. popcorn, kettle chips or something. I mean, they, they don't even have to be that special. They'd just sell. Yeah, they would just sell. Or yeah. make fresh ones in the parks and give them yeah. little bags. Exactly. Let's come up with a new snack. All right. When we open that fifth gate, everyone, let's have chips as the main signature yeah. snack. Or make them in like little fives and zeros for the 50th. Come on, Disney. Yeah, I just want to see a little bit more for 50th. Just make chips. them just make them imprinted with like little fives and they're already a circle for the zero. Or Mickey head shaped chips. Yes. That I think they could do. Disney, this is a market. Why are you not on this? <laughs> but anyway, we are digressing <laughs> down snack lane. Yes. <laughs> as Disney people often do. However, the whole point of this episode was to give you know, tell you a little bit more about exploring the Disney Springs Resort area. So really, if you have not considered it, I really think you should check it out. Check out those Disney Resort hotels. Check yes. out the Good Neighbor hotels if you want to stay off-site. They might surprise you. But it really is a great place to stay. And yes. I have to say, the bus service to the parks is pretty good from there. It's not that bad, actually. It's pretty frequent, it's as much the, as I hate buses. It's one of the better ones because they know you don't have other options. And if you drive, you get free parking right outside your uh, house. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, I think it's free parking if you're non-DVC. I shouldn't say that. I'm not 100% sure. But it definitely is convenient parking, whether or not it's yeah. free, because it's laid out again, if you think of sort of a subdivision where you can just sort of pull up in front of your yeah. townhouse building is sort of what they're like. Anyway, everyone, we hope you enjoyed this episode oh, on do, Disney Springs. What? They don't have elevators. Yes, they do. At we Old just Key don't, West. At Old Key West, they do not have elevators. Yes. Uh, they might have some accessible buildings, but yeah, if you do, don't want to worry about it, then you might want to veer towards Saratoga Springs. Good or a catch. ground floor. Or a ground floor. I don't mind the ground floor there yeah. myself. Yeah. Just wanted to mention that. Yeah, good one to throw in. <laughs> some people will not not want to carry luggage upstairs. I mean, I'm, nobody I am loves one of those people. Yeah. I'm very lazy. Yeah, that's why I have to do it <laughs> for you. All right, everyone. Thanks for listening to this show. If you enjoyed it, please feel free to give us a rating on whatever podcast network you listen to, and we would very much appreciate it. We love having you along every week, and we love hearing your feedback. So thanks again for joining us. We'll see you again next week, and have a magical day. Bye-bye. Thank you.